There's a lot to consider when booking a hotel room. Location, amenities, quality. But for most of us, the deciding factor is price. In many cases, that room will cost significantly more than your flight. So, how do you find the best deal? Consumers Checkbook did nearly 2,000 searches looking for the best hotel rates, and you're about to find out what we discovered. I'm Herb Weisbaum, the Consumer Man, a contributing editor at Checkbook.org. Welcome to Consumerpedia at Checkbook.org. We're the nonprofit that helps consumers select services, avoid trouble, and save money. Because we don't accept any advertising or take money from any business we recommend, you can rely on Checkbook.org to be completely independent and objective. Now, here's the host of Consumerpedia, America's consumer expert, the consumer man, Herb Weisbaum. In this episode, we're going to share some important hotel intel that Checkbook researchers have documented. Information that should save you time and money on your next trip. Does it make sense to book with a hotel or an online travel agency like Expedia or Travelocity? What sort of tricks do travel websites use to get you to book now? Does it pay to call the hotel directly? And what do I have to do to get an honest-to-goodness better price? Here to answer all these questions, Checkbook's executive editor and road warrior, Kevin Brassler. Hey, Herb. So, Checkbook's latest report on hotel rates is out, which you wrote, and I've got to say, with love, because you're my friend and my boss, <laughs> it's rather long, even for you. Yeah, even for me. Uh, I uh, I kept telling everyone as I was writing this that, you know, I don't know how we got to the point that I have to write 10 pages to tell everyone how to get a good deal on hotel rooms, but, you know, here we are. I thought you just, like, put in where you're staying in a search engine and magically you got the best rate possible. I guess that's not the deal, huh? It's bizarre that travelers have to put in so much work these days to book their vacations. Uh, you know, the internet, it was supposed to make this just so easy to do and, and easy yeah. to compare prices. But, you know, especially for hotel stays, uh, you know, we found this just an incredibly frustrating experience, which mirrors my own experiences trying to book rooms over the years. One thing we discuss in our report is that really across all forms of travel these days, the price you see, the price they show you up front, is never the price you pay. Uh, travel providers, travel websites uh, just make it nearly impossible to compare real pricing. But especially for hotel rooms, the key takeaway, I think, of this project uh, is that for specific stays, that is, you know, the same room at the same hotel property for the same dates, we didn't find much price variation out there. Uh, in other words, if you did what we did and search for the same stay across dozens of different websites, including the hotel's own websites, uh, you'll encounter probably what we did, which is that we found the same pricing over and over again. And there's a reason for that. As you've reported before, the hotels and travel websites all have agreements that really require everyone to post identical pricing. There aren't these great deals out there to be found. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Hotels are worried that third-party websites like Expedia or Booking or Orbitz or whatever uh, will undercut them on price. Uh, the hotels, they want to make these sales themselves and not have to pay out big commissions to other websites to do their bookings. And on the other hand, the third-party travel booking sites, well, they're happy to not have to compete with one another or the hotels on price either. So travelers basically get shown the same pricing over and over, no matter how much they shop around. Uh, and a big reason for this is that nearly all of these travel websites out there are owned by one of two companies. And those two companies are Expedia and Booking Holdings. While it seems like there's healthy competition for travel bookings, there really isn't. Orbitz and Travelocity and Expedia, Hotwire, Priceline, Agoda, I mean, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. All that competition you see out there is really an illusion. Uh, Expedia and Booking Holdings have either bought up and locked out much of their online competition. I mean, even Verbo is owned by Expedia. And so what happens is, is the hotels and these booking sites, they have agreements in place that say, basically, they're going to show the same rates to folks for the same stay across all these different booking platforms. And we know that because checkbook researchers checked and checked and checked and checked rates. Tell us what we did to come to this conclusion. Yeah, so we identified 75 hotel stays, uh, so specific properties for specific dates of our stays, and looked for the best rates uh, using 24 different booking websites. Wow. Uh, we also checked the websites of hotels themselves, and we called hotel front desks. And we mostly found that all that searching, it was nearly 2,000 searches, just netted us the same prices for the same stays, no matter how hard we tried. 
Now, we did uncover some outliers. For some of our stays, we found that all of our searching around did uncover a great deal. So for example, we found a rate for one of our stays uh, that was sold at $500 on one site we checked, but at pretty much all the other sites, it was listed for $740. And why? Well, we don't know, uh, but I'm not sure I'd recommend that folks spend as much time as we did doing all this searching. Man, it was painful. <laughs> Checking 25 websites, sometimes we did score an inexplicably great deal, but I think those were outliers. Usually we didn't. So the result is, you know, you can shop till you drop online. You can check the hotel site and all these different third-party booking sites for a specific stay, and you're likely to get shown the same rates over and over again. And so the hotels and the booking companies well, yeah, they're happy about that. They don't have to worry about getting undercut on price. And of course, the losers here are consumers who really like to shop around to uncover good deals for the most part. And we'll get into some saving strategies. But for the most part, there aren't great deals to be had out there if you're shopping for a specific hotel property for specific dates. So there are two types of travel sites on the web. There's the online travel agencies, such as Expedia and Travelocity and Orbis, which we were just talking about. And then there are these aggregator sites, such as Google, Kayak, or Travago, that provide price lists and links to the various properties, and they make commissions if you buy using that link. What did you find out, or what do you think about them? Yeah, our researchers found that, that overall uh, sites like that were a waste of time. So Google or Kayak or Trivago, they'd show us really good rates, but then we'd actually click on them and find that, oh no, now that rate isn't for some reason available anymore. And sometimes even when you book through one of those sites where you found a lower rate there, well, then later on, you know, that booking is contingent with having the reservation confirmed with the hotel. And I have a few times, including just a few days ago, tried booking through one of these sites. I found a great deal when I had to be up in Boston and they canceled my stay the morning of my stay because the hotel finally looked at it and said, well, no, we're not selling it for that. And we're overbooked anyways. So I, I think that Kayak and Google and Travago and these others, uh, they were helpful for finding cheap flights. But for hotels, our research, you know, we basically found they just weren't worth our time. We just ended up with too many dead ends. And, and, I, and it's just better not to use them, I think. What about this site called Super.com? So we found that Super.com did save us a bit. Uh, what happens is it works a little differently. You supply it with details about your stay. And then later on, a few minutes later, it texts or emails you with its offer. I found that kind of a pain to do. I didn't like that experience. I didn't like having to wait. But some of our researchers didn't mind it, and they liked that it provided savings of about 7% for specific stays over the prevailing rates. And we've talked about this before, but let's just mention it again. Ignore all those warnings about limited availability. Don't let that hype pressure you into making a snap decision to buy that room. Yeah, we found that a lot of sites uh, still warn that, you know, there's only two rooms left and stuff like that. Uh, it's to pressure you and to, you know, stop all this foolish shopping around and just book already, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we found that you can usually ignore these dire seeming warnings. Uh, we researched them during a previous study and found that there's usually still plenty of rooms left. When they say there's only one room left at that rate, they're talking about, yeah, you know, whatever, a handicapped accessible room with a king bed, but there's still plenty of other rooms left in the hotel's inventory. So, you know, take your time, continue to shop around. All these warnings usually don't indicate that all the hotels in that area are really booked up. So what about the package deals these online travel agencies offer? So you're getting the hotel and maybe the car and the airfare. By putting that together, can that save you money? Yeah, it might, because by offering you a package price, they're kind of getting around all these rules that hotels and booking sites have about showing the same rates, you know, across the different booking platforms. You know, they may cut you a deal on the hotel rate or the rental car rate or something like that. And so it may be that that package is lower cost than buying a la carte. The reason I don't book packages is it, it introduces another level of complexity that I don't particularly like, but you might uncover a deal, you know, a special discount by doing that. And remember, if you use one of these online travel agencies and there is a problem, and there's usually problems when you travel, you have a third party to get in the middle of solving this. It's not between you and the hotel or you and the airline or you and the rental car company. You probably have to go through that online travel agency, which is going to bog things down and slow things down. Yeah, and as Herb, as you reported for us during the pandemic, a lot of people had trouble getting refunds from hotels and airlines because they had booked through a third party and the travel provider uh, said, well, yeah, if you want a refund, you got to go contact your, you know, your travel agency or the third party bookers. 
And that's yet another reason why I really don't like these vacation packages that, you know, sometimes you might save a lot of money, but often baked into that is that the, you know, the airfares, basic economy or some other fare where you can't make any changes and the hotel is a non-refundable rate. and uh, You don't get really a lot of information about type of room. You know, my wife and I were looking at doing one of these vacation packages for an all-inclusive stay. And it, I just felt like it wasn't giving me enough information about what was included in that as opposed to booking directly with a hotel or, or some other, you know, direct travel provider where I could ask them questions about, you know, what would happen if I'm not satisfied, right? Who do I go to to complain to if things don't go right? So how do you find the best deal? Kevin has some strategies that can save you money, and we're going to talk about that next. I'm Herb Weisbaum, and this is Consumerpedia, powered by Checkbook.org. If you like what you hear, we hope you'll consider being a Consumerpedia supporter by using the link at the bottom of the show notes to make a small contribution each month. This is Consumerpedia. So, Kevin, there are ways to pay less than the published rate to find discounts that aren't offered to everyone and that you won't find on the websites we've been talking about. How do you unlock these deals? We did uncover some strategies, uh, some ways to save that get around all these pricing constraints that are put in place by hotels and booking sites. So this is the key. While these agreements between hotels and third-party booking sites say, you know, we have to show the same price to everyone for the same stays, these companies are permitted to offer lower rates if they restrict access to those rates to certain groups. So in theory, members of AAA or ARP, they might qualify for special rates. Or you could sign up for a membership at a hotel chain or you know, join some kind of membership thing where you get their junk emails at a booking website and then log in and see lower pricing that's not put out there for the general public. Because those rates, you have to do something to go see them. Everyone who's out there shopping won't see them. They'll only see the agreed upon rates between hotels and these booking sites. But as past checkbook research has found, the best way to get prices usually involve so-called mystery deals offered by Hotwire and Priceline. I know you personally use these options all the time. I find it creepy and uh, you find that they're a great uh, money saving way to go. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get it. And, and, you know, so what happens is when you search these two websites, it's Priceline Express deals, Hotware hot rate pricing. They display pricing for specific hotels. So you get, you know, a list of hotels and specific properties and what their rates are uh, for the dates you're looking at. But they also show these mystery deals. With these rates, they show you a price. They give you information about the hotel's amenities and its general neighborhood location, its star level, uh, its average user rating. But what they do don't tell you is the exact property where you're going to stay, whether it's a Marriott or Hilton or whatever. They give hints to it, but they don't tell you that specific information about where you're going. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, as you said, Herb, booking these types of rates, it seems to a lot of people is a bit of a gamble. You do get information on neighborhood and star levels and user ratings and stuff, but you don't know exactly where you're going to stay until you've paid, until you've booked, prepaid, and then there's no backing out. On the other side, we found that these rates were really the only consistent savers in all our research that we did. Then on average, our shoppers found they could use these rates to save about 28% off the prevailing rates. I mean, that's a big chunk of money considering Mm -hmm. we found very little price variation elsewhere. Uh, And in some cases, we found that by booking a mystery deal, we'd pay half as much as the lowest rates offered by those hotels through other booking channels. So again, they're doing this because it circumvents the hotels and the hotel booking sites own restrictive pricing policies because you don't know for sure which hotel is offering that rate. They can provide these discounts for it. But I do think, and what I find is they give you plenty of filters to make sure you land in a good spot. They tell you, you know, the star level of the hotel, three, four, five stars. They tell you that its average user rating is, you know, eight plus or nine plus or whatever, 90%, depending on how they do the scoring. Mm -hmm. And usually I can even figure out where I'm going to be going. So I, you know, I know it sounds risky in her, but I, I don't blame you for not liking these deals. But personally, I get enough filters and information to ensure that you know I don't end up at Bed Bug Inn <laughs> or the uh, the motel run by that guy in Psycho. <laughs> you know, for me, that's enough because the whole point for me of shopping around is to overall find a good deal for my stay and not have to end up spending you know eight hundred dollars a night just to know I'm staying at the Hilton or whatever that I don't even really care about. 
But again, the big downside of a mystery hotel shopping is that it's non-refundable. And if you're going to something like a conference, you may not be in the conference hotel or you may not be with the rest of your family if you're going to a wedding, which may be a good deal in some cases. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, that's the one thing to keep in mind. If you really, really want to stay at a specific hotel property, yeah, don't book these mystery deals. So fortunately, we found other ways to save if you don't like these mystery deals as much as I do. So let's talk about those non-refundable rates. I'm booking my summer travel plans now, the end of the summer. And there's a lot of options where you can save this amount of money if you pay now and it's non-refundable. What about that? Most hotels now offer small discounts if you prepay for your stay. It's not much. Uh, we typically found that the average savings were about 5 to 12% off their usual rates. Keep in mind that just because your booking is labeled as non-refundable, you know, I find that if I can't make a trip, if I have to change my dates, for example, you can still rebook it. Uh, I do this all the time if I get delayed. I do this when I've had to change plans. I also, uh, several times a year, book the wrong dates. I'm just a knucklehead uh, when I'm doing this stuff sometimes. And often I find that you know the hotel won't offer me a refund because I booked a non-refundable rate, but they usually are willing to change my dates to rebook me for a different time period. That's usually not a problem. So that works if you go to Atlanta all the time for business. But if this is a one-shot deal to Niagara Falls for vacation, that's maybe not the smart way to go. Yeah, if you're planning on attending a wedding and you're not quite sure if they're going to go through with it, I don't think I'd book a non-refundable rate. If there's any real uncertainty about your trip or your plans, then don't book the non-refundable rates. And you have a caution for folks who are buying the refundable or flexible rates. What do we need to know about that? So this really made me mad. I mean, you have these hotels that are saying, okay, we have different rates to choose from and we'll give you a discount for booking a room that's non-refundable. But we often found that even the refundable rates that were offered to us weren't actually refundable, uh, especially if travelers decided at the last minute to cancel. The policies for a lot of these rates is that uh, you have to cancel more than 24 hours before your check-in. Well, if your flight gets delayed or canceled, you're not going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. We also found that in some cases for these refundable rates, you can cancel, but you still have to pay the equivalent of a one-night stay to do so as a penalty. And the rates we found listed as flexible cancellation were absolutely absurd. I mean, the policies say once you dig in, well, yeah, it's flexible, but you have to cancel more than 72 hours before your check-in. And even then, we found most hotels would only refund less than half of the cost of our trip. Uh, it's just ridiculous that our hotels and websites are using these types of labels if the stay isn't truly refundable and cancelable. Yeah, and that's why the consumer man never books a hotel room until he reads the cancellation policy first and figures out if he even wants to go with that flexible rate. I mean, you just have to do that. That's how we protect ourselves. You have to be really careful these days, especially with hotel rooms, to find out what their policies are for canceling a reservation. And that not only goes for hotels, but it goes for vacation rentals. Uh, consumers have a lot of trouble these days trying to cancel and get their money back for even rates that say refundable. I found that becoming a member of a hotel loyalty program, and I'm a member of several ones, a couple I use, really do get me some good offers throughout the years when I travel. What about that? Yeah, we found that also, that you can save a little bit by logging into a website, you know, creating an account with Expedia or a specific hotel to quote unquote unlock lower rates. So again, as I mentioned before, that's a way that hotels and booking sites can offer lower rates and get around these agreements they have in place with one another that they'll have to offer the same rates across booking platforms because you've done something to see rates that are specific for you as a member. Our researchers, when doing all this work, joined all these programs, right? If a website offered it, uh, we checked their rates and then we joined to see if it would lower our rate. Uh, and we found that they typically did so by about 8 to 12%. But... You cannot assume that doing that extra step and signing up for junk emails, basically, will save you money. And often all that joining and logging in that we did, it got us the same darn rate as we saw before. And sometimes logging in, it actually made our rate go up, uh, which we found was really weird. What about the discounts offered by Costco? Yeah, we also found that Costco does offer some discounts. Again, with it, you only see those discounts if you're a Costco member and you log on to its travel website. And so I think Costco travel is worth including on your shopping list. It saved us on average about 6% off the prevailing rates. But know that Costco has really limited availability. I mean, for our 75 stays, we can only get prices for 13 of them via Costco. It, it limits your searching to only specific hotel chains that it works with. And here's a travel myth 
that you've busted, which is, hey, just call the hotel. They're going to give you a cheaper rate. That's what all the travel stories say. What about that? Yeah, I often read that myself when I'm looking at other stories on hotel rates. And and really, they're full of it. I mean, we called the hotels, all 75 of them, and found it to be a total waste of time. I don't think calling saved us anything uh, for any of our 75 stays. Uh, usually when we called, we found that the person working at the front desk They just immediately transferred us to a central reservations number. And even when they looked up pricing for us, we found that, you know, basically they were staring at the same screens we were and quoting us the same pricing we were already looking at. Up next, the most important piece of advice Kevin has for finding the best deals on places to stay on your trip. I'm Herb Weisbaum, and you're listening to Consumerpedia, powered by Checkbook.org. Consumerpedia Fast Facts. Any idea which cities have the most hotel rooms? Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world, is number one with more than 150,000 rooms. Orlando, Florida isn't far behind with 140,000 rooms. Rounding out the top five, Shanghai, China, New York City, and Bangkok, Thailand. The most expensive hotel room in the world at $292,000 is the Lover's Deep Luxury Submarine Room in St. Lucia. Number two is the Palms Empathy Suite in Las Vegas for a hundred grand a night. So Kevin, after doing all this searching and collecting of all the data, your biggest piece of advice is when booking travel, you need to be flexible. So while our research really focused on how to find the best possible price for specific dates at specific hotels, don't remain locked into staying at a specific property if you can help it. I find there's often big savings to be had by just comparing prices at other similar properties nearby. So instead of getting locked into staying at a specific date or specific days, even if you can help it, you know, remain flexible. Uh, flexibility is key to uncovering good travel deals. Look at various properties that meet your conditions, that get favorable reviews, that have the star level and the amenities you like. And when you do so, you often find that you can save a lot by just, you know, staying at a place around the corner from it or a few blocks away. Uh, And by being flexible with your dates of travel also, uh, you can also uncover, oh, okay, what was really expensive to stay in this place for this weekend, but the next weekend, oh no, rates are even half. I find that all the time. Sometimes there's conferences and conventions or graduations at colleges or whatever. They really drive up rates because so many people have booked up hotels. A lot of the hotels, just like the airlines, have calendars that show you the rates and you can see that, boy, if I went during the weekday, if I have the flexibility and not the weekend, I can save a huge amount of money or, as you said, move it down two weeks or something like that. Yeah, and I do that also. I mean, I think usually the best strategy is to figure out, well, what's the biggest cost component of my trip? Is it the flight or is it the hotel or the vacation rental? And then last summer, the biggest cost component might have been rental cars because those were so expensive then. Yeah. I found myself starting my research by figuring out, you know, I don't even know where I want to go, but I'm going to try to find a place that has inexpensive rental cars. And that was LAX Airport. So I started my trip in LA and I started the basis of deciding where I was going to go and what I was going to do. But yeah, especially for hotels, rates vary tremendously just by the dates you pick because their entire business model, just as airlines is, is about booking up as many rooms as they can or as many seats on that airplane as they can for as much money as they can. And when if they think they're going to have extra rooms available, well, that's when they start lowering their rates or even dumping their hotel rooms, their excess off to these you know mystery deals or other discounters that might be out there. So the bottom line, where is the best place to book your hotel room? Overall, if you're finding the same rate everywhere, if you can't find a way to save on your stay, go ahead and book directly with the hotel, especially if doing so doesn't cost you anything. The reason for that is the hotels often save their best rooms for people who do that because that way they're not having to pay out 15% commissions or whatever to Expedia. And they may also give you special perks uh, for booking direct. Uh, They may give you a room upgrade. You may get I don't know, free parking or something like that. Uh, And then also, if you have a problem, well, you know who to talk to. You don't have to go off to some third-party booking company to deal with them to get a refund or to rebook your stay. And before we go, a sage piece of advice, stop obsessing about points. Don't get me wrong, right? I like free stuff. I've joined all these programs. But I really think it's important that before you decide to stay at whatever, Hilton property or Marriott or whatever, because that's where you have most of your points, 
know that all your points are really not worth that much. They are effectively worth only about a 1% to 5% rebate. So if you can save 25% off that Hilton Properties rates or whatever by booking it next door at Hyatt, take the money. A couple of episodes, we spoke to Christopher Elliott, the travel columnist who spends his life traveling. And he said to me, and I was very surprised, I don't do rewards programs because you make stupid travel decisions based on getting the points. I find the best price. That's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, and most of us really should be making a hard dollars and cents decision here. And if you can save $1,000 for your vacation, booking a different property, man, I mean, you know, please do that. Well, we have plenty of other great advice and tips for booking hotels and other types of travel on the website, checkbook.org. Kevin, thank you and safe travels. Thanks, buddy. Well, that's it for this episode of Consumerpedia. You can subscribe to us on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. Remember, we release new ones every other Thursday. Another way you can support this show is to follow us on Consumerpedia on Facebook and Instagram, and at My Consumerpedia on Twitter. I'm Herb Weisbaum. Thanks for listening. Consumerpedia is a public service of Checkbook.org. We're a unique nonprofit that helps you save money and make smarter choices. You can count on Checkbook to help you find the best services and avoid the worst with local ratings that are accurate and unbiased. If you live in or around these seven cities and haven't joined Checkbook yet, check us out. Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle, San Francisco, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. To get your free 30-day subscription, go to checkbook.org slash consumerpedia. If you like what you've heard, we hope you'll become a supporter by using the link at the bottom of the show notes to make a small contribution each month. Consumerpedia, empowering consumers to save money and make smarter choices.